All right, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Today our presentation is Natural Gas Technology, a, n a new and clean um, energy pathway for CTE. And our presenter today will be Dr. Beth Hargis, and she has been principal of the Pulaski County Area Technology Center since its inception in 2006. And Dr. Hargis holds a bachelor's degree in accounting and master's degree in secondary education and leadership. Her doctorate is in educational leadership with an emphasis in Appalachia. So without further ado, um, Dr. Hargis, please feel free to take it away. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. We are very excited to have the opportunity to share our natural gas story with you, and also hope that regardless of your ability to incorporate natural gas into um, your building or your, you know, your interest in CTE, that you will be um, able to take something away with you that will help you build a CTE program, because our goal is to bridge that skills gap in the communities across the United States. And forgive me, give me just a minute. We're having having trouble progressing the slide. Okay, I'm not sure what's happened because it it just it says you are the presenter, but for some reason it's not me help you out here, Beth, and see if it works with. Okay, Beth, so you know what? Whenever you want to progress to the next slide, just say next slide and I will help you out and move on to the next one. All right, we're located in Somerset, Kentucky, in Pulaski County, and we're on beautiful Lake Cumberland. We're roughly 60 miles south of Fayette County, Lexington, and about 150 miles southeast of Louisville. We are the third largest county in Kentucky with a population of over 63,000 and close to 700 square miles. Okay, Celia. We are one of 53 state-owned technology centers and we were established in 2006. At the time, of course, we had five programs, welding, health sciences, industrial maintenance, carpentry, automotive technology, and of course, natural gas is now our sixth program. We are, in 2014, we were ranked third in the state among the 90 plus state and locally owned career centers for career readiness, which is part of Kentucky's accountability model. We're located in a renovated Food Lion grocery store building, and that served as a great lesson to the state regarding the cost effectiveness of renovation rather than new construction. We saved a lot of money, and we have a wonderful building. We also have a wonderful team atmosphere with both our staff and students taking ownership and instruction and learning, and I'm a firm believer that that's one of the primary reasons for Eric's success. Okay, next slide. We serve three feeder high schools, and within those three high schools, they have approximately 3,000 students, and as you can see, all of our feeder schools were classified as distinguished and progressing. Um, last year, and I really believe that we are the common thread among all of those feeders in, in the success that they've had. Next slide. Now during 2012, in one of our annual steering committee uh, meetings, I asked the group, you know, how we could better meet the needs of our community's workforce, you know, were we being a, a benefit? And the mayor of Somerset, Eddie Girdler, spoke up and said, well, you need to train people in, to work on natural gas pipelines. And at that point, I really, I had no idea that Somerset had anything to do with natural gas. Um, where we live, you know, people that are located within the city limits, they have natural gas for their homes, you know, to heat and to cook with. But other than that, we really hadn't thought about it at all, had, had no idea, you know, how, how the industry worked. We also knew that we would love to have a sixth program in our offerings, but again, we'd never considered gas, and before anything, we really had to determine if this program was aligned with our school's vision, and so we needed to answer some questions. And it was certainly obvious we needed to do some research. Now, as I said before, even if you're not interested in a gas program, before you undertake any new CTE adventure, I would recommend that you pose you know, questions to you know, within your own building. And what we decided was relevant is, number one, would this program help develop a local workforce? Would it enhance CTE? And would it increase student opportunities for employment and post-secondary options? Next slide. 
When asking whether or not this was going to build a, work, a local workforce, our research simply started with a history lesson. And here's what we found out. Um, in the mid-1970s, Somerset, the city of Somerset, had borrowed money from the Farmers Home Administration and extended a natural gas line to eastern Kentucky. The pipeline transmitted natural gas out of wells that had previously been landlocked. So really, this, this was a great move on the part of the city. And currently, they own 150 miles of natural gas pipeline. Next, next slide. So why natural gas in Somerset? You know, how did, you know, even though we have this pipeline, why do we need a CTE program? The Somerset Gas Service is currently serving 20 producers um, with their gas lines of approximately 1,000 natural gas wells. Um, they're not only providing natural gas, but they're selling the byproducts from the natural gas and making quite a lot of money on that. Um, contractually, they're receiving right now about 40000 a month, and that contract is in place for 20 years. And again, right now, it's, we're looking at about 3 to $4 million a year with the goal of $10 million within five years. Next slide. In the past couple of years, the natural gas in the city of Somerset has really taken off. Um, we are in the process of building a municipal building. Um, city halls being moved. It's going to be, you know, we're moving our entire fleet of um, city-owned vehicles to compress natural gas. So that it's really, it has become the centerpiece of really of this, the city's economy. Um, and we're hoping to really set the stage for, um, you know, for others to look to Somerset to see how to, to do this. Next slide. Now, in fact, our history lesson in Google answered all three of our questions. We found out that local gas, or that locally natural gas, was a critical piece of our economy. And again, as we see in Kentucky, you know, why not? Um, we knew that public training for this skill set wasn't readily available to the public, and that research was as easy as just talking to people in the industry and again googling it. You know, we couldn't find anywhere where in the United States at that time that it was offered to secondary students. Thus, it would certainly enhance career and technical education and would provide employment opportunities for our students, not only locally but nationwide because our students, even if they choose not to stay in our area, that is a skill set that can be used across the nation. So we knew that it was a skill set needed to, to locally maintain our, our workforce. Next slide. So you may be asking why natural gas in your area? Next slide. Next slide. And you may be thinking, you know, I don't live in Somerset. We don't have access to the same resources that Somerset has with the gas. My city doesn't own a gas line, but you know, it really doesn't matter. Natural gas is not only growing as a clean energy option, it's here. Next slide. Natural gas is abundant. It's a fossil fuel which over time has been cooked into natural gas. The primary ingredient is methane, but also includes ethane, propane, butane, and pentane. And as we've already discussed, those are simply byproducts which can be sold for profit. Next slide. And again, it, natural gas has really become an essential part of America's energy mix. Um, some of us can remember back in the mid-70s when natural gas, you know, had a, um, a stint as being very popular. And during this time, there were a few natural gas vehicles produced, and actually a few of them are still around. Um, car, as a matter of fact, car engines that utilize compressed natural gas do not have the carbon buildup that gasoline engines have. So it extends the life of the engine. Right now, as you can see, natural gas supplies nearly one-fourth of all of the energy that's used in the United States. And of course, due to its efficiency, the cleanliness and reliability, it's growing increasingly popular. Um, it's anticipated that the consumption will increase by 11% by the year 2030. And again, most of this uh, natural gas demand comes from electricity generators who have turned to it because it is the cleaning, cleanest burning fossil fuel. Next slide. Um, and, and once you start researching this, I mean, the facts that, that come out are really, it, it's, it's so interesting. 
you know, when you really stop and think about it, you know, you think the Pentagon, the White House, the Capitol building, they all use natural gas as a heating source. I was in Washington, D.C. Um, in the past year, and I was surprised that, you know, I was outside and looking around, and a lot of their city buses, you know, are compressed natural gas. So it's, again, the popularity of it and the consumption, they're growing. Um, together, gas and utility pipeline companies spend close to $7 billion per year to ensure that it's delivered safely and reliably. And there is a coding system, um, safety code, that's, that's very tough. It's very tough to, um, to stay in compliance with that, but the, um, the producers are doing it. Next slide. According to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, or EIA, natural gas is a clean energy. And, of course, we hear that in the news all the time, you know, how, how we really need this. So the potential in natural gas is relatively untapped. It's renew the renewable gas research is emerging, and the American industry is utilizing natural gas to meet their energy requirements. Um, you know, if you see the, the third bullet down, 80 to 90 percent of what we actually use is domestically produced. Um, there's a lot of research right now in renewable natural gas. Um, and that's where they're covering landfills and, um, you know, taking the, the, um, the gas that's generated from that and utilizing it. So um, there are a lot of great opportunities within this. Next, fact, or next slide. Okay, so who uses natural gas? It's expected that the total natural gas consumption will average 72.6 billion cubic feet per day in 2014. And that's an increase of 1.8% from 2013, and of course it's led right now by the industrial sector. In 2015, total natural gas consumption is expected to increase as growth in the industrial sector continues to grow. Currently, the U.S. consumes more natural gas than we produce. Our excess consumption is provided largely from Canada because it's um, from, and you'll see later with some slides that, um, you know, it's, it's easier for the northern states to, to bring the gas over from Canada than it is, I guess, that to run some new pipelines. But an important note is that the United States, they not only consume more than anyone, but right now they are also, produ we are, are also producing more than anyone else in the world, slightly more than Russia. Um, and if you remember, it's important to note that the natural gas consumption is increasing not just in America, but worldwide. Next slide. So where will it end? And the good news is, next slide, the end is really not in sight. Next slide. Okay. Now, as I said earlier, the United States is leading the way globally in both production and consumption. And on a positive note, the natural gas reserves are present. Significant growth in proven reserves has steadily increased since 1960, and it's still on the rise. Now, traditional supplies include, include offshore and onshore wells in the United States and Canada, and that's meeting most of the current needs that we have. As needs rise with increased consumption, natural gas production will continue to migrate, such as the deeper waters of the Gulf of Mexico into the Rocky Mountain basins. So natural gas is found all across the United States, and this, um, this graph actually shows proven reserves in exploration, and it's still going on. So when you think about what's still out there that hasn't even been tapped yet, we don't even know that it's there. Um, the bottom line is we have natural gas in the United States, and we have enough to meet our needs, and it's now considered a new clean energy option. Next slide. Now, we found that career paths associated with natural gas are enormous. Next slide. From exploration to the final um, installation, the skill sets are very extensive. And for us, it made the most sense to follow our community and what they needed, and that was people to work on the pipeline technicians. Now, if you look at this, um, this picture, you know, you've got the wells that are in production. So, you know, there's a skill set there for the exploration. You've got gathering lines, you have processing plants, compressor stations, then, you know, you're going into the residential area, uh, you're putting it into the power plant, you're putting it into um, business and industry. So again, the delivery system alone in natural gas is enormous, but 
I mean, when you think about all of those pipelines, you know, someone has to ensure that those are, um, you know, there are no leaks and that they're safe. Next slide. This is probably my favorite slide in the entire um, presentation. Um, this map shows the pipeline network in the United States as of 2009. And if you note, notice the second part there, in 2014, the American Gas Association reported 2.1 million miles of local utility distribution pipes along with 300,000 miles of transmission lines. And in 2014, the American Gas Association also reported the natural gas delivery system in the United States has an outstanding safety record. Um, American Gas Association reports improvements in technologies have contributed to a steady decline in natural gas pipeline-related incidents. And in fact, from 1991 to 2004, the number of incidents with natural gas distribution pipelines decreased by more than 25 percent yet the amount of natural gas traveling through the delivery system increased by 30%. At that, during that time, an additional 650,000 miles of pipeline were added to the system. So, you know, the safety record is increasing, and so is, um, you know, so is the amount of pipeline that's out there. So, and as you can see, I think this really shows you, too, I mean, it's, it's across the entire United States. So regardless of where you live in the United States, regardless of where CTE, your CTE facility is, you know, somewhere there's probably an opportunity for, for this program. Next slide. Now again, going back to our questions, our research and discussions with stakeholders revealed that this was certainly a viable program from a community standpoint. And after looking at the industry, we felt like the program could hold its own within our building. And yes, the answers were yes across the board. So, you know, we felt like it would help develop a local workforce. It was going to enhance CTE, and it would really increase student opportunities for employment and post-secondary options. Because our community college that's located um, in Somerset has jumped on board with this as well, and so they want us to have a seamless transition for the students coming out of our program, and they want them to be able to go on into, um, you know, the community college to receive certi additional certificates and/or associate degrees in this area. Okay, next slide. So now that we'd, once we'd answered our questions, you know, of course, one question always leads to another one, and it was, you know, how do we do this? How do we pull this off? I'd never started any program, much less, um, you know, one that hadn't actually been implemented yet or, you know, even talked about. And we found that there were some things that we needed co to consider. Marketing, curriculum, funding, community support, enrollment, state support, and an instructor, and these were just the things that we could think of starting off. Next slide. And along the way, of course, we certainly encountered some um, obstacles, and for the most part, next slide, all of our considerations ended up being obstacles for us. Okay. All right. So how do you overcome obstacles? You know, for us, it seemed like at the time there were so many and it was so overwhelming, but we felt like that we needed to really rearrange our little graphic and let the community support drive this. Um, and I loved, you know, you hear about a grassroots effort, and that's really what this was. And I really feel like this outlined what CTE, you know, as area technology centers, this is what we need to be doing. We should be talking with our community. And we really let the, the local community um, take the initiative on it. We loaded up a van. We took local superintendents and community leaders to the state and met with advisors and CTE administration to get state approval. Now, we already had a funding commitment from the local government. And I will say, um, wow, what a blessing that was. Because when you're starting any new program within your building, money is always an issue. And so we were very fortunate. But what I learned from that is when the community is in need, they will step up to the plate. So yes, we were very beneficial and blessed with, with the city of Somerset and you know the, the funding for it. But again, regardless of what you need, if you can find the right people in your community, um, you know they'll, they'll step up to the plate and they'll come forward. 
Um, the community support branched out. We, we were able to partner with the Kentucky Gas Association. We located a curriculum vendor, and both of us helped us with the marketing and to find an instructor. And really, finding an instructor was one of the most difficult things that we had because people in this industry are making, um, they're making a lot of money, which is wonderful news for students who are interested in going into this area. But again, that, you know, that, finding an instructor was certainly, um, th that was a huge obstacle. Okay, next slide. Now again, we talked about the various pathways, and for our pathway, we determined that the pipeline technician was the best fit for our needs. So last year, we, we identified four courses that we would incorporate and send the students through um, you know, a, a pipeline technician pathway. Last year, we started with the fundamentals of natural gas distribution and natural gas industry safety. This year, we're offering meter and line installation maintenance and service line initiation along with those first two. So we are this year we are offering um, all four courses for our students. Next slide. Here's where we here's where we were and, and you know we started last year in November. We had 25 students for the first course and 13 students for the second course, but we are so pleased because these are industry certification exams that the students have been taking taking. And they passed them with a 97.8% pass rate. We only had four students that failed. And it's important to note that to pass this exam, an 80% was required. So our students were incredibly successful. Um, next slide. This year, we have 29 students in the program. And that's about half of where we want to be. But you know what? We're growing. And this is the first full year that we have it. And so we're excited. Um, the state has adopted it. They have given us money for it. This year, um, we were able to find an instructor straight out of industry. Um, the state is paying his salary as, as one of our teachers. And they've actually, Kentucky has approved this program as a viable career pathway. So again, the, if students progress through this pathway and can leave here um, what we consider career ready, then that helps um, all of our feeder high schools accountability with the state. So it's been a win-win situation. Next slide. Um, we have just a picture here of our students. As you can see, they are doing hands-on. Um, even though we're new, we've had some donated materials. The students are able to take apart meters, put them back together. Um, next slide. This is probably the highlight of the entire program. And we have an explosion tube. And so the students um, learned that you know, they can simulate a natural gas explosion. And of course, safety is such a, you know, that, that's who we are. Safety is our, that's our first priority. So we actually, in our room, um, we, when we renovated our meeting room in order to set up a classroom, we brought in some natural gas um, appliances. As you can see, there's a water heater in the background. We have gas logs. We have a stove. And we also put compressed air in the room so that the students, you know, we're not turning students loose with, um, with gas and just saying have at it. It's, very, it's a controlled environment. So our students are able to start with compressed air, and that way we can measure for leaks, we can um, identify problems, and then they actually, we do have natural gas in the building and in that room, so they are able to, um, you know, to hook it up to the stove. They light the stove, and in the winter last year they actually they had the, the gas logs on, so they're, they're putting it into practice once, they, once they've mastered it. Next slide. Now, as always, non-traditional students are very difficult to come by. And this, is, this picture is of Macy New, and you, you may need to go ahead and hit enter to bring up the bullets under her name, but Macy was our very first student that was registered in the program. She passed every certification given. Now, and again, this just shows you another one of the, um, the pathway jumping off points. Macy wants to be a chemical engineer, and so she is in, she is in college right now, this fall, and that's her major, um, chemical engineering. So we're very proud of her. Um, and, you know, we're, the way this is presented to students, you know, we, we tell them that we're offering the pipeline pathway. But you know they need to think about what they want and what they want to get out of it. And if they want to go straight to work, we're going to help them. But if they want to go on to college and um, pursue a career in this, you know we're going to help them find the pathway that fits their needs. Okay, next slide. 
All right, and next slide. Now, again, I, I hope I hope you've been able to get some information out of this that will help you in building a new CTE program within your own building. But I would encourage you to evaluate your school and community. You know, what is best for you? What's best for your community? Would natural gas technology enhance your CTE offerings? And if not, what do you need? Um, ask yourself some questions. You know, where, and if you identify a program, you know, whether it's industrial maintenance or it's natural gas, you know, where are you going to find the support and funding to start? In our quest, there were many headaches, many unanswered questions that popped up, and several days when I really was unsure if it would ever come about. Um, you have to have perseverance in order to pull it, pull it off. And I, I kept telling myself, anything worth having is worth hard work. And if you're doing this for students and they will truly benefit from it, then you know don't stop. Um, if you hit a wall, just back up and take a different path. You know, look elsewhere. Um, I I found many times that you know in my mind I would have this all planned out, and then it wouldn't work. And in fact, it didn't work the majority of the time. But it it worked out a different way, and it's you know it, that was the key. It did work out. Um, we're not all the way there but we are certainly on our way. Um, and again, at, at, we're closing the presentation now, but, and, and if you have any questions, I, I encourage you to ask. But if you need more information, um, please feel free to contact me, and my information is on the next slide. But we'd be happy to share um, specifics as far as our room renovation or um, you know, people that we were partnering with in order for, to get curriculum and to figure out um, how this industry actually works. We'll share anything that we have. We we know that there has been another school, I believe in Louisiana, that is now offering natural gas technology um, within their building. But uh, as far as I know, we were the first ones to start it. And it's a unique industry. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I've, lear I've certainly learned a lot. And we enjoy working with our kids. And most importantly, our kids are enjoying it, and they are learning. So does anyone have any questions? Well, Celia, I'll turn it back over to you, and thank you very much. I, I really appreciate the opportunity to share what we've done. Of course. Thank you, um, Dr. Hargis. I greatly appreciate you coming out here tonight uh, and talking to us. Um, again, this presentation will be recorded, and although our ACT live site is under construction at the moment in regards to our archives, we will have these on YouTube, and then once we finish our construction, they will all be available via the ACT online website. So. Um, Stay, hang in tight, and we will have everything sorted for you very soon. But again, this is recorded at the moment, so this will be ready for you, um, hopefully within the next few days. But um, yep, so our upcoming online seminars, again, stay tuned for those. We will be promoting them on social media, and they will be happening um, in the next few months. And then January, we're also having a big opening with our Women in STEM, our Gender Equity online seminar set. So please keep a lookout for dates and registration um, times for all of those. And thank you again for joining us, and I hope everyone has a great rest of the day. Thank you.